Hello, and welcome back to Mastering Django Web Development by Pack Publishing. In this section, we're going to learn all about optimizing your development environment. We're also going to look at PIP ENV and learn how it replaces PIP and virtual ENV or PI ENV. We're also going to learn how to separate your settings files into multiple files, as well as how to set up a custom .env file. In this video, we're going to be introduced to a new Python tool called PIP ENV or PIP ENV. And we can look at how it replaces PIP in the virtual in and PI ENV. We're going to learn all about PIP files and lock files. And we're going to also learn the basic commands for PIP ENV. And by the end of the video, we're going to convert our entire project to a PIP ENV project. So you might be asking yourself, what exactly is PIP ENV? Well, PIPEMV was written by Kenneth Rates, one of the Python Software Foundation's board members. It is now the officially recommended packaging tool for Python, and it attempts to fix some of the poor and complex tooling that Python's used up until now. If you've used PIP before, you probably know that PIP only generates a requirements.txt file that just lists out the requirements of the project, as well as the dependency number that it needs. PIPEMV instead uses a PIP file and PIP lock system. This allows truly deterministic builds. PIPEMV also automatically adds and removes dependencies from your PIP file. That means no more happening to regenerate your requirements file before every commit. PIPEMV also automatically creates virtual environments for you, so you no longer have to worry about installing virtualenv or virtualenv wrapper. Everything just works together. All in all, PIPEMV is just a better tool than either PIP or virtual environment. This singular tool takes the functionality from both and combines it into one well-oiled tool. And if you haven't started using it yet, you definitely should start using it for any projects going forward. Great, so now let's take a look at some code and see how exactly we can do all of this. So as you can see, our project directory hasn't changed that much. We still have our my site project directory and our requirements.txt. To start converting this over to a pip env project, we need to use the command pip env dash dash th -e -e 3. This tells pip env that we want to create a new project directory or a new virtual environment, and we want to use Python 3 to do so. If you're not using Python 3 in your projects yet, you really should start. The only real part here that's important to notice is this last section. PIPEMV is telling you that it created a new PIP file, but it's using versions of your dependencies. PIPENV holds that we shouldn't pin our versions unless we're moving out to production. And that's really where the PIP file and lock file come in handy. So let's look at that a little bit closer. If we do another ls of our directory, you can see we have a PIP file here. Let's take a look at that. Inside of our PIP file, you can see there's various definitions like where pip is supposed to look to get packages. You can also see that it's listing out each package and what specific version it wants to use, as well as a section for dev packages and a section for requires. So this is where the first big difference between pip env and pip come in. Pip's requirements files, created through the freeze command, pins a specific version number, such as Django 1.11.7. PIP EMV holds that we shouldn't pin version numbers while we're developing a project, instead allowing the project to update with the latest current dependencies instead. The only time PIP ENV assigns version numbers is when you lock your PIP file to get ready to move the project into production. For right now, PIP EMV isn't sure what we want to do, so it's converted the version numbers over from our requirements file, just in case. The first thing we should do, though, is remove these dependency numbers and just add an asterisk or a star, shift 8, to the version numbers so that PIPENV can upgrade our project to the latest working versions. So I went ahead and changed over the version numbers off camera. Next thing we need to do is actually install all of the packages that we need. Make sure to save when you exit your file. Now all we do is do pip env install. PIP ENV is smart enough to look for the PIP file. It will also create a lock for our packages and our dev packages and install all of the projects or the dependencies that we need. So let's take a look at that pip.lock file. 
file.lock, and you can see it's just a JSON array or a Python dictionary. It gives us different information about our environment, such as what Python we're using, in this case CPython, which version, 3.6, what kind of platform we're on, what kind of machine I'm using, what operating system, and a whole lot of other information regarding our host environment. We also get detailed information about where PipENV is getting its packages from. And then lastly, we get our default packages. You can see we also have an SHA-256 hash to verify the package and make sure it's the same one being used in all environments. We also get a pinned version here of the latest version of the project. The same thing happens for all of our other dependencies as well. Lastly, down at the bottom, if we specify any specific packages as dev packages or development only packages, they'll be listed here and only installed when we pass in the dash dash dev flag. So now that we have our environment set up, let's look at starting the server again using runserver. cd into my site. There's two different ways we can do this. The first is a single one-off command, pip env run. This will run whatever commands you pass to it through the pip env and run it in our virtual environment. In this case, we want python manage run server. As you can see, the server starts up just fine. The second option is to do pip env shell. This will spawn a new shell inside of the pip env virtual environment. This is probably more what you're used to if you've used virtual environment or virtual environment wrapper before. Once we're inside the shell, we can run any command that we want and it'll be run through with all of our packages from this virtual environment, like so. The last feature of pip env I want to show is its graph function. Exit out of the development server. Now run pip env graph. I'm also going to use the less command so that we can filter through the results more easily. pip env graph lists out all of the dependencies of your project as well as all of the dependencies of those dependencies, creating a nice tree or a graph-like flow that you can follow to see why certain projects or dependencies are installed on your project. You can also see what version is required and what version is getting installed. That way you can make sure that all of your dependencies fit properly, though pip env should take care of this for you. The graph command certainly isn't a requirement to have a fully functioning package manager, but it certainly is nice to be able to see what all is using what dependencies in your project. In the next section, we're going to look at how to separate out settings files. We'll also look at how many settings files we should use and strategies to split them up. We'll also review what constants we should keep in each settings file and why it's a good idea to separate your settings files out.